Hello everyone, welcome back to Basics, the channel where we talk about everything and anything to do with the bass guitar. Today is part two of my series, The History of the Bass Guitar. We left off last time in 1935, where Paul Tudmark released the electric bass fiddle to the public. Today we're going to pick up from there and go to around 1958. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful journey of the bass guitar. Now let's get down to it. In 1935, Rickenbacker releases its first model bass. This bass was made out of metal. Yes, metal. Most basses are made out of wood. Why was it made out of metal? I don't know. I couldn't find that on the website. <laughs> so, yeah, it was made out of metal and it had the iconic Rickenbacker horseshoe pickups. Later on in the 1930s, two different companies, Regal, and Vega each come out with their own version of an electric bass. The first one, Vega, releases a, the electric bass viol, which is basically an upright bass that you can plug in, which sounds really cool, honestly. And then the other company, Regal, created the basso guitar, which I guess you're supposed to play like a guitar, but it's a... you. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds cool, I guess. And then, in 1938, Gibson releases its first model. This model had an end pin on it so it could be played both upright and like how you play a bass guitar now. So that's a cool thing about Gibson because they started off making like classical instruments. They had that influence on their guitars and still do today, even with Epiphone, their uh, other lower brand. So in the 1940s, Paul Tutmark's son, remember him, Bud, starts building his own basses, which I'm not even sure why they included because they don't bring it up again. But I think that's pretty cool that he followed in his father's footsteps. That's, that's nice. However, by the end of the 40s, jazz musicians still weren't satisfied. They still weren't being heard in their orchestras. They still weren't just, it still wasn't working for them. Their basses still were too big. They weren't being heard. And eventually, somebody heard these complaints. That somebody, Leo Fender. Yep, the guy that founded the Fender Bass and Guitar Company. He created the Fender Precision Bass, released in 1951. It had a single pickup coil. It was pretty simplistic compared to later models, but it was revolutionary for the time. It was compact and light, you could hear it, and it was just incredible. Following Gibson, uh, following Fender's success, Gibson releases their model, the EB-1. And once again, like their earlier model back in 1938, it also included an M pin that you could play both upright and like a guitar. By 1957, jazz music musicians were using bass guitars, notably Mon Monk Montgomery, an African-American bassist who used a Fender guitar in his jazz songs. Also in 1957, Rickenbacker releases the 4000 series, the precursor to the 4001 series. And by 1958, Gibson releases the EB2, which has tone control on it. This is one of the first spaces that you can control the tone on the bass by moving it this way. It gives it a rumble tone, a very low end sort of gear towards that. And you can turn it the other way and it gave it a smooth mid-range tone very probably warmer and yeah it definitely influenced the music to come and other bases to come and i hope you guys enjoyed today's video i worked really hard on it especially on stuff that you don't see going on um so uh remember if you guys really liked it remember to like subscribe Leave a comment. I love reading your comments, by the way. And just stay put for the next video where I'm going to be going over major arpeggios and minor arpeggios. And I'm going to be back on the bass. And um, 
just stay safe out there, folks.